So I did a fair bit of reflecting before deciding exactly what I was going to say today, and uh, in that process, I realized that my story began, I think, five years ago. And honestly, it does not seem like five years have passed, but I guess that's the case when you do something you're really passionate about. You don't really worry about the time you have to invest. You just do it, and you keep doing it until you achieve your goal. And so my story begins all the way back in grade 8. And that's the logo for the Primaries of Canada. And my teacher put me in, in touch with that program and signed me up for it. And the Primaries of Canada connected me with a mentor, Dr. Dougal Matheson. Now, he's a former neuroscientist from the University of Toronto. But I didn't know that when I first met him. He simply asked me, Zemir, what would you like to study? And to me, the brain is so fascinating. It's a marvel. And my answer was neuroscience. And so we were just a perfect match. And so for an entire year, he taught me so much. And I learned so much. And we eventually dug deeper into the topic of neurological disorders. Now, it was really interesting for me because at the same time, I was volunteering my community with, uh, with people some from a wide variety of things, and the more and more I learned from my mentor, the easier it became for me to approach these people, and the more comfortable I grew. And eventually my year did come to an end with Dr. Mastin, and I presented what I learned to my friends, classmates, and teachers. And as a result, I became a scholar for their program. Now, I was actually in high school around this time as well, so there was more motivation for me to act on this newfound knowledge, you know, what, I know all this now, what do I do? It was a question I had to ask myself. And so I created something called Initiative for Neuroscience and Dementia. And that was a logo when we started out. That's uh, Microsoft Word art, it's fine, so I guess. Uh, and at that time, and we still are a youth-led organization, but at that time, our goal was mental health. And we partnered up with Sick Kids Hospital, and they were a great partner for us. And we raised funds for them, and we raised awareness, and we had a great year. But something always felt missing for me. I never felt like my membership was truly complete because I never had the chance to work with the people that I had learned about. But that all changed that great Penn summer. I luckily got a chance to volunteer at Baycrest Hospital where I met people with multiple sclerosis, dementia, and I actually learned about the amazing work Baycrest was doing in terms of dementia care and dementia research. And that's when I was fully reborn. We have a better logo. Uh, and we had different goals, but at the same time, some similar ones as well. The first two remained the same. A, to raise awareness. B, raise funds. But this time, we were doing it for the Dementia Research Program at the Press Hospital. But also we had a new one, a third, which was to actually work with the patients suffering from these neurological disorders. So I returned to high school, and I was spending my time between volunteering at the Press, where I worked with patients, and I played chess with them to stimulate their minds. But I was also volunteering at Sunnybrook now, and they had a veteran center where they have people suffering from dementia, and I spent my time working with patients there as well, sort of reduce their gap between home and hospital to make their days are just more comfortable for them. Now, out of curiosity, before I go any further and tell you about my experiences with these guys, uh, how many of you know what dementia actually is? Raise your hand. I'm not, that's, there are a few of you, that's great, but I'm actually surprised that there are not more hands because not too many people know about it. And that's why awareness is a huge goal for our organization. And uh, I've got a little snippet right off of the key, I'm going to read it out for you. Dementia is a broad category of brain diseases that cause long term loss of the ability to think and reason clearly and is severe enough to affect a person's daily function. Now, 60 to 80% of the cases of dementia are a result of Alzheimer's disease. That's a huge amount. And signs and symptoms vary from memory loss, language loss, attention, problem solving skills issues, and so much more. That is so frightening for me. And it gets even worse because when you actually see it in person, it's so much more different than just reading and learning about it. And that's what happened when I was at Sunnybrook uh, one particular day. I'd be visiting this patient on a weekly basis. We'd sit down and say hello, we'd share stories. And then I did this again one particular week, like just a normal day. And I sat down, but this time he looked really confused. I said hello, and just the look of confusion was still there the whole time. So I just had to ask him, uh, do you recognize me? Do you know who I am? And his answer was no, and I, I couldn't believe it. We had spent hours talking and connecting and sharing stories, 
And all of a sudden, he didn't know who I was. I was so rattled and blown away. And it's just that moment, still, I just remember it so clearly. And then there were another, another instance. Um, there were two patients that would constantly be reliving one particular memory from several decades ago. That was a reality, but that memory was just memory from so long ago. The scarier thing is, so many cases go undetected for years. There is no cure, there is no prevention, there is no way to slow it down, and there is no flawless detection method. But I guess that's why you fight this amazing fight. To date, IND has expanded to eight different schools, most of which here are in Ontario, but we now have one in Vancouver as well. We've raised $10,000 for the Dementia Research Program, and we've got hundreds of students registered as members to join the movement. Most recently, we partnered up with the Youth Health Advisory Council with Dr. Tiffany Chow and the Alzheimer's Youth Organization and a couple of other great people in an effort to help incorporate brain health education into the high school curriculum. Right now, we're gathering our resources in an effort to register IND as an official nonprofit organization with the Government of Canada. Now, at the same time, we're also working on our largest awareness campaign. Commit to the cure. Now, what this is, is people get a chance to go onto our website, d-ind.org, and simply type in their name, age, and city, and hit submit. But this is involves something bigger. It's a pledge, a personal promise, that they will never stop helping us find a cure. Now, how they follow up on this promise is up to them. It could be through a donation. It could be through donating their time, their knowledge, funds, wherever it is. Or simply just being aware. Because that adds to the awareness factor. And I'm encouraging each and every one of you to do the same. When you go home, pledge. Make that promise. But I'm also making one more request before I end my talk. And that is, Whatever inspiration you may draw from the people around you, from the people on the stage today, don't forget about it. Transmit it to something meaningful into your lives. Take action.